back to In the Cage with Bards here on ExportStar.com. And joining us now, we have the man scheduled to fight Carlos Ford Fodor, the Strike Force import coming up at UFC 157 on February the 23rd. The man known as the Hands of Stone, Sam Stout, on the program. How are you doing today, Sam? Not too bad. How are you? Doing great. I really do appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy guy, but I have to ask you uh, right off the hop here uh, about uh, the Olympic Committee decision to drop wrestling as a sport. Uh, this is something that sent shockwaves, not uh, just through the amateur wrestling world, but through the MMA world as well, because uh, wrestling is one of those skills that you absolutely have to have to become a good MMA fighter. So uh, how do you feel about this decision? You know, I, I saw it all over Twitter um, yesterday, or the, yesterday or the day before, and, I, I, you know, it blew my mind. I, I really, um, you know, wrestling is one of the, the oldest sports in the Olympics, and to, to have it, you know, be taken out doesn't make any sense to me, and, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm pretty sad to hear the news. Even being a guy who doesn't, doesn't really come from a wrestling background, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's awful. I think it's, um, you know, really sad for people in the wrestling community, and, and you know, that's, I, you know, from, from all the wrestlers I know, that uh, you know that's that's kind of like the epitome, the peak of, of a wrestling a wrestling career. That, that you know, it's like winning the World Series for a wrestler to, to be an Olympic champion, and uh, now they're not going to have that opportunity. It's really sad. Yeah, we saw a number of uh, UFC people take to Twitter uh, saying that you know that they started uh, in wrestling wanting to be an Olympic champion. Guys like Johnny Hendricks, and they kind of found MMA through that. And my concern is that uh, in Canada, you know, we don't have as as uh, well a defined system as they have in the states. In the states, they can still wrestle, you know, go up through college and compete for the NCAA title. But for Canadian wrestlers, I mean, you were pretty much training for the Olympics. Uh, that that was the ultimate goal. There was really not a whole lot of secondary things you can do with that. So, I, do you think that it affects Canadians maybe a little bit more than uh, other nations? Um, I definitely, yeah, definitely. You know, that like I was saying, uh, you know. That's that's the goal that most of them are looking for in the end. You know, even even you know kids who who take up wrestling as uh, as just little guys. You know that that's that's their, the ultimate goal for them is to win an, uh, win the Olympics. You know that's what they dream of. Um, you know I think it's going to affect um, wrestling at all different levels to 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 you know take it out of the Olympics, but including and not just here in Canada. I think. The places like I think the U.S. will will take a hit in their uh, in their wrestling signups as well. I, I completely agree with you there, and you know, I can actually see like a real bad spillover effect from this. Uh, think of that, you know, like well, you know, high school, you know, uh, high school administrators are always under the gun to cut something from the budget, and if they see wrestling, and that well, you know, there's not really anything they can do with it, you know, it's not like they can go compete in the Olympics or anything. My fear is that that'll wind up on the chopping block. Is that a fear for you as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think there's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of repercussions to this decision that they've made. Absolutely. Well, let's talk now about MMA and uh, going up into this fight. You've decided to keep training camp at home uh, around your home base of Adrenaline Training Center in London, Ontario. Uh, what was the impetuous behind that decision? Pardon me, what was what? Uh, what was the reason you made that decision? You know what? Um, I... I, I wasn't really in bad shape at the start of this training camp. I, you know, I, I, it's a very fast turnaround. In fact, it's the fastest turnaround between fights I've done since in my career in the UFC since I've been fighting there in 2007. Um, it's, uh, you know, a very short period. It was a short period of time, so I never really got out of shape. I didn't feel like I needed to go somewhere and really work on getting in shape. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that the gym, Adrenaline Training Center, has, has really. Um, been evolving a lot. We've got a lot more guys to work with. There's a lot more coaches. There's a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more resources right here. So um, it's, it was very nice to be able to to stay home, sleep in my own bed, cook in my own kitchen. I felt, you know, I feel really comfortable. I feel, uh, you know, I feel uh, like it's it's been a really, you know, it's taken a little bit of the stress out of the camp, and I feel I feel really great and really confident going into this one. Excellent. How are things at the ATC camp these days? Because in addition to the big names there, of course, uh, the recently retired Mark Hominick, yourself, uh, a guy like Chris Clements, uh, they've also got uh, a lot of guys that are kind of on the cusp of breaking through, guys like uh, Chad Laprise, Alex Gasson, among others. Uh, you know, So how is the, the mood at the gym these days? Because you guys are really seeming to make a, a great stride. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a great place to be right now. You know, some of those names you mentioned, Chad Laprise. Uh, guys like Chris Hordesky, 
guys like Jesse Rossman, that uh, guys Jesse Gross, um, Jay Raj, um, like there's there's some guys that are you know they're they're right on the cusp like you mentioned, and those are the guys. Those are a lot of times are the best guys to work with because they're the most diligent about training. They're the hard, they're the hungriest. They uh, you know they're there every day, and uh, you know and really they're these guys are these guys are all amazing training partners. Chad Laprise has been one of my one of my main. Uh, like probably my my main training partner during this camp, he's been holding pads for me. Um, he's been sparring with me every day. He's been uh, you know he's been a big huge help, and um, you know it's uh, it's really nice to have that kind of those guys with that kind of motivation around you. It, it helps motivate you. Absolutely. And I've been hearing that uh, since his retirement, uh, Mark Hominick has uh, really kind of stepped up at his leadership a lot and uh, trying to, to fill the shoes of the coach, Sean Tompkins. Is that an accurate statement? Um, yeah, well, he's, he's really busy right now with his, with his daughter, so he's, he's not, you know, there to oversee every single workout, but he, has, he is organizing our tra- all the pros training schedule. He really has stepped up a lot in terms of a uh, leadership role, and which, is, which is nice because, you know, that was – that was kind of what we were missing, you know, since the death of Sean. And, uh, yeah, Mark has definitely helped fill that role, um, you know, and everyone else, everyone collectively has kind of stepped in and tried to fill Sean's shoes. Um, and, and, yeah, Mark will be in my corner for this fight as well. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling, I think we, we've got a really good thing going on here at, at ATC. Excellent. And, you know, we mentioned uh, some of the great names uh, that are kind of on the cusp at ATC. Uh, Jesse Ronson among them. Jesse Ronson, of course, we last saw him in the score fighting series, which appears to be no more. And that really leaves, leaves a big void uh, in the Ontario MMA scene. And with uh, things the way they are with the Ontario Athletic Commission, it's a void that uh, I'm not certain is going to be uh, filled again. So uh, when you look at some of these guys uh, in your gym that are on the cusp of making it, but maybe just need a few more fights, but they can't do that in your, in your own backyard, how does that make you feel? You know what? It really sucks. I, that's the only way. To, the only thing to say about it. Um, you know, the score fighting series had a great idea. They were trying to be, um, you know, a, 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 a stepping stone to the UFC. They weren't trying to compete with the UFC. They weren't trying to to be the next big thing. They wanted to build local guys, bring in you know competition from from the US or where, wherever it may be to uh, to really test. Um, you know the the local talent and Ontario-based fighters, and uh, you know that 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 was uh, it seemed like such a good idea to me. And you know it's unfortunate when the score got got bought out by Sportsnet, they didn't you know see it as a profitable enough um, venture for them to continue. But you know it's it, it's kind of it's it, it's kind of sad when things get cut because they don't you know really make sense with the, when it when you're talking dollars and cents. But um, you know. And you leave out the, the kind of, you know, they forget about how important it is to build uh, build local fighters and uh, and you know the the kind of you know it was the score fighting series wasn't about making money it was about heart you know and uh, you know guys like Chad guys like Jesse guys like uh, Malcolm Gordon guys like Jesse Gross uh, just just in my gym alone are all really struggling right now to try and find fights everyone's scrambling to to find fights but. You know these guys are these guys are tough and they have great records. So promoters out west or promoters, you know, in the U.S. aren't a lot of them aren't willing to fly fly them all the way out there just so they can beat their their local champ. You know, so it's it's a very difficult spot for all the guys at my gym right now. Absolutely, and how much of the fault of that is uh, the Ontario Athletic Commission? You know that uh, each fighter has to pay a thousand dollars in medicals uh, at the start of each year. Uh, promoters have gone on record now publicly saying that it's about f- between forty and fifty thousand uh, dollars if you want to run a show in Ontario. There's people who have name checked Ka- Ken Hayashi, the commissioner, as being part of the problem instead of part of the solution. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, I think I think uh, it's it's sad to see that you know they you know they finally. They finally made it a possibility to do shows in Ontario, and they're making it so difficult. Still, after it's been legalized, to, they're making it so difficult to to uh, to put a show together. You know, it's just the the prices or the costs that it is to bring in the commission, to bring in um, you know the the money that these guys have to have in advance before they can even you know start promoting or start advertising for a show is just out is outrageous. 
It really is, and we can only hope that uh, this turns around. But let's turn around now uh, to your MMA career and your last fight against uh, John McDessie. I, I know that you were disappointed in it, and to be fair, I think a lot of fans were disappointed in it too. Uh, a lot of us uh, thought we were going to get, you know, a, a, a real, you know, the stand in the center and kind of chuck them thing uh, because both of, you, uh, of your previous fights would seem to indicate that. But John McDessie really kind of seemed content in that last fight to, to kind of really almost take on a point fighting uh, uh, attitude towards it and kind of just kind of jab you to death yeah you know that's what that's really the best way to describe it he, he's kind of beat me in a point fight and uh you know that's his, that was kind of his background so i guess it was an easy transition for him to go back to that um you know i was i was very disappointed i still am in that one but um you know john played it you know he had a smart game plan going in he needed a win badly and uh you know it was um you know he got himself. He got the win that he needed. So, um, you know, I'm I'm more frustrated with myself in that performance because I should have been more patient. When I, I it, it really frustrates me that I lost the second and third round the exact same way I lost the first round. I I should have gone back to my corner after the first round, re regained my composure and changed my game plan on the fly. I've been doing this long enough that, um, you know, I should know that. I should know and I should be able to do that. So, um, you know, I'm most disappointed with myself in the last one, and you can expect to see a lot um, a lot better performance in terms of, uh, you know, use it, using, like, kind of thinking out what I'm, what I'm going to do next. You know, if, there's, if I go into this fight and Carl, Carlos Fedor, I don't expect him to, but if he takes a page out of McDessie's book and, and uh, you know, tries to beat me with the jab and outpoint me, then, uh, you know, I'm going to change the game plan midway through the first round and, and uh, you know, and do the right things to counter that. It seems that there's a lot of fighters, uh, just from my perspective, a fan perspective, that are kind of uh, you know, using that kind of point fighting style today. Uh, there's a fighter that said to me yesterday that, uh, well, that, that's the difference between an athlete and a fighter. An athlete will try and appoint you. A fighter will actually try and win a fight. Uh, do you agree with that statement? Um, yeah, I, I guess it makes sense, you know. It just it's it sucks that it's um, you know everyone wants to see the, the the fights that have heart you know the fights where guys are going out and fighting not they're not going out and fighting to not lose they're going out and fighting to win and that's yeah. you know that's how I've always tried to perform I've always tried to go out there and fight to win and look to finish fights and and uh, you know it's it's kind of sad that it's you know the sport is going more to a, a, a you know where guys are are just trying to squeak out a win, and they don't care if, if the cr crowd's booing the whole time, and they don't care if, if uh, you know, if everyone hates their fight as long as they get that W. But, you know, it's understandable because everyone's just trying to make a living, in it, and it's and it's really not the easy, you know, the UFC is, is not the easiest way to make a living, and if you're not winning, then, you know, your head's on the chopping block, and you can lose your job at any, any given time. Uh, that, that's a great point. Going into this fight against Carlos Fodor, uh, he's another guy that comes from a great camp in uh, Matt Hume's AMC Pancration. Uh, where do you think that uh, Carlos presents uh, the biggest threat to you? Um, you know, he's just, he's really aggressive. He's really good in the clinch. He, uh, you know, he's smother, he's really great at smothering guys. And, you know, he's got a couple good submissions under, his, under you know, on his record. He's, he's really, uh, you know, I think he, I, he's a pretty dangerous guy anywhere the fight goes, so... Um, I really got to have my, you know, my wits about me and, and be and go out and fight him smart. Are right, you planning to adjust your style to, to guard against, you know, kind of being, a, you know, clinched and held against a cage or anything like that? Or are you just looking to go in and do what you do? Um, you know, it, there's uh, there's definitely I've been working on uh, on you know working out of a clinch and, and that type of thing. Um, but that being said, I, you know, I'm still going to go out and try to impose my game plan and not. Not try and beat him at his, and 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 I'm gonna try and make him fight me in my style. Oh, well put. I'm watching the tape on him. Do you think that there's holes in his game that you can exploit? You know, there's there's holes in everybody's game. I think uh, he's you know he's a he's a he's a good striker. He's a good you know he's good everywhere. So, um, but yeah, I definitely think that there's some things I'm I'm gonna try and capitalize on. 
And uh, I, we said off the top, he is a Strike Force import. And Strike Force, uh, since the closing of the company, they've come in and they made a lot of noise at the last pay per view. They went three out of on that card. Uh, guys that came over since the company closed. Uh, do you think that Strike Force people are kind of uh, being underrated on their way into the UFC? Um, I think that there's a lot of people that have a tendency to do that. You know, they yeah, the same thing happened with WEC that you know no one. I think everyone overlooked a lot of the guys. And look at now, there's our 155 pound champs with WEC guy. Um, you know, look at uh, the number one contender at, one, at 145 or 155 really is Anthony Pettis. Um, it's it's uh, you know I don't I'm not I'm not going to be underestimating Carlos Boda. That's that's for damn sure. All right. And uh, we've seen you uh, fight uh, in Montreal a lot uh, with uh, somewhat mixed results. Uh, if UFC runs Calgary in July for Stampede as it did before, is that a card that you'll be looking to be involved with? Um, I love Calgary. I'd love it. That'd be, that'd be a great card to go, uh, go fight on. I would really enjoy that. All right. Well, we'd love to see it. We'd love to see it here in Toronto as well. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen it. Oh, I've got a chance to fight in my whole province, so that would be, uh, that would be a good one too. I don't, when, do you know when the next... Uh, uh, it's, uh, September is the one for Toronto. I'm not sure you'll want to be on the sidelines that long. No, that is a long. That's a long layoff. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see how things all shake out. But uh, right now, right now, I just got to focus on next weekend. Absolutely. And we've talked a lot about your MMA career, but uh, you know what I want to ask you about is your music career. Because we've seen you do a video on YouTube, uh, lip syncing along to somebody that I used to know. What my question is, Sam? Well, what is the second single for Sam Stout off this album? Oh, I don't know. That was kind of done on a whim. I don't. I don't have any uh, any plans to make any more of those. But you never know. Get huh? a couple of drinks in me, and, and anything can happen. <laughs> uh, I hope so, because you know uh, Tim Kennedy's kind of uh, challenging your spot with the, the, that Katy Perry cover he did. So uh, I think the ball is in your court now, Sam. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, Sam, uh, thank you so much for joining the program today. It's uh, an absolute treat to be able to speak with you. Uh, one last question for you. It's something that we ask everyone that comes on the program. If you had the opportunity, you get to punch one person from any walk of life right in the face, who would it be? Uh, I, I think I'm going to have to say whoever uh, whoever's responsible for pulling wrestling out of the Olympics right now. Well, there you go. I don't think anyone deserves it more right now, Sam, to be honest with you. <laughs> Thanks again for joining the program. Let the people know where they can find you on the Twitter, uh, any other uh, uh, social media or, or uh, internet things you got going on, and any other thank yous or shout-outs you want to give. This is your time, my friend. Um, you know, I want to thank all the boys at Adrenaline Trace, and the Chocolate Freeze, Jesse Ronson, Malcolm Gordon, uh, Chris Hordesky, Chris Clement, Mark Hominick, all my boys. Um, if I forgot left anyone out, I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, those guys have all been... Uh, Huge help to me in this camp, and uh, you know when I go up there and get the win, they're all going to have a big, uh, big part of that. Absolutely, Sam. The hands of Stone Stout here on In the Cage with Bards on ExportStar.com, and we'll be back with more MMA action right after this. What can I say? Oh, the reaches of the Orient comes an age-old recipe passed.